Oh, it's spectacular, all right. A spectacular swing and a miss. Howdy, I'm Kurt Williams, and today we're looking at issue one of Spectacular Spider-Man by Greg Weissman and Humberto Ramos. I was really excited for this issue because we have Humberto Ramos on art, and way back in 2011 when I finally started reading new comics, I was reading Fear Itself and Amazing Spider-Man during the Spider Island series, and those two series taught me how to love modern comics. Ramos's work on Spider-Man was just a breath of fresh air. So my expectations for this issue were really high, which might have something to do with why I didn't love it. Don't get me wrong, Ramos's work is as fantastic as ever. I don't see a single panel in here that seems awkward or like it has a weird pose or a weird angle. The anatomy is solid. The style is solid. Ramos has a style that people either love or hate, but I think that his work is consistent and high quality. There are no shortcuts being taken here. It's all conscious decisions for what to do with his style. The real thing holding the issue back was the writing. And again, don't get me wrong, if you're not as critical about comics as I am, or if you just want to read comics that are like the Spider-Verse movies with Miles Morales, then you'll probably like this comic. It's classic Spider-Man stuff. But for those of us who know how good Spider-Man comics can be, is just not doing it. In this issue, we're following around Peter Parker and Miles Morales as they try to just have regular meetup times where they can talk about their lives and be regular people together. But of course, it doesn't go as planned because Spider-Man has a billion enemies who show up at the most inconvenient times. So for most of the issue, we're following the two of them as they fight this weird, hulked-out version of the Jackal, who's a classic villain from, I think, the 70s. We also have quite a few flashbacks to when they were just hanging out in a coffee shop, mostly so that we can get introduced to a bunch of the characters that are going to be prevalent in this series, like Flash Thompson's ex-girlfriend, Shashan, or Miles' old neighbor, Cedric Harrison, or Kenny and Shelly, these two coffee shop employees who may become important characters later on. I don't know yet. And all the dialogue that goes on around the coffee shop stuff just feels necessary for filling space. We're really only there to meet people. There is a running gag where Peter tries to become a regular in the coffee shop, and he goes back over and over and over until they remember his name and what he wants to order, and that's got a little bit of charm to it. But one of the common problems with the writing in this issue is that the jokes last a little bit too long. It's not that the jokes are bad, we're just just lingering on them long enough that you're saying, all right, time to move on. I think that Peter and Miles are both very lighthearted in this issue, which is not my favorite tone for a Spider-Man comic, but there's tons of Spider-Man comics out there that are for kids or just very kid accessible, and it's fine that this is going to be one of them. My biggest complaint about the issue is that there's a bunch of stuff going on in the sidelines that just doesn't make any sense yet. Like we have this brief one-page scene where this guy shows up in court and he says that he's going to lie while he's there, and of course the judge is like, mm, you better not. And then he says you should at least thank me for being honest that I'm gonna lie unlike all the other people and she's flustered That scene made no sense to me the first time I read it I thought it was really out of place and really poorly written It does make more sense when you have more context though later on We switch to a scene with a bunch of characters We don't know and they're on stage doing what I assume is an opera and the guy gets massive applause And he says he's been wanting this his whole life Which also did not make much sense in the context of the overall story when I read it the first time But then we get a third little scene with a couple people we've never seen before and it's a couple coming together and one of them says it's everything they ever dreamed of and that's when I started to see the pattern. There's a bunch of people out there living their fantasies and we don't know why. Now it failed to connect these incidents to anything else having to do with Spider-Man or the other characters we do know so I would not say that I'm intrigued by all these things yet. Maybe it has something to do with this ad that Cedric saw earlier in the issue where you get paid to beta test a new entertainment software but that's a big fat maybe right? I'm grasping at straws here. If Weissman wanted us to connect all these things, then he didn't do a very good job of laying that trail of breadcrumbs. So what the issue amounts to is two Spider-Man trading kind of corny jokes back and forth, fighting a villain that it takes them forever to defeat, while we also get to see them doing pointless socializing that's really just exposition in disguise. And meanwhile, a bunch of random things are happening that may or may not become important later. So, yeah, I didn't really like the writing in the issue. If you don't mind turning off your brain and just going along for the ride, then this is a really fun issue. It's very enjoyable if you're not trying to analyze it. And Ramos's art is just really well done. It's energetic. It's fun to look at. It's great stuff. Is it the best thing coming out of Marvel right now? No. But uh, it's not that bad, I guess. It could be way worse. I'm gonna give issue one of Spectacular Spider-Man like a high six, low seven. It's got some things that bother me, but it's still fun. Hopefully all these threads will start to get tied together in issue two. I feel like I should have more of an idea of where the story is going already. But who cares? It's Humberto Ramos on Spider-Man, so that's all that matters. Did you read it? What do you think?